1994, uh, the country was really down and everything was destroyed. So the, gov the government has to start from zero. And you, you can see it now, the development is really uh, very impressive. So as genocide survivors, and we really uh, have been really shocked and put down with the genocide, and everything was destroyed. You know, we have lost people and properties, and it was really hard to, you know, to get up. And, you know, people were traumatized. There was no hope of living. But, you know, within the power of, you know, the willing of the government to say, no, genocide happened, but we have to do everything we can so that we rehabilitate the genocide survivors. We help them to reintegrate in the real life of the country and to empower them economically and socially. During the genocide, 94 genocide, the, 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 the economy was completely down. You know, I remember some of the reports were showing that uh, the economic growth was below zero. You know, like the country has so many debt to pay, but there was no internal revenues. So it was, you know, below the, uh, to zero. A lot has been made possible through togetherness and reconciliation, both socially and in the decision-making processes. A 2013 International Monetary Fund report quoted the growth, saying Rwanda was the 10th fastest growing economy in the world during the decade from the year 2000. From the time we, start, we, we started seeing the economic trends being very positive, it was when there was this economic reform in terms of investment policy, in terms of uh, all the reforms, structural reforms, you know, uh, so many departments being merged and, you know, having a one-stop uh, center where people should get the, the, the service, being on investment, being on, on tax payment, you know, all the, 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 the legal framework favoring the investment. When all this structure was in place, we started seeing things changing. With all those combination of factors, we, we started seeing so many investors, foreign investors coming to Rwanda and those who invested, they started seeing the positive result of the investment. So that was like the kickoff of the economy. But the last five, three years, you know, the government was also revisiting some of the legal framework, even some policies to fit the, the new demand because, you know, it's about uh, refashioning what you design to respond to the needs. The Survivors Fund and the One Dollar Campaign, for example, continue today to rebuild the lives of survivors in the areas ranging from healthcare to house building, education, and entrepreneurship. Genocide Survivors Fund started in 1998, just four years after genocide, and it had a mission of rehabilitating genocide survivors in need, mostly in education, you know, to, uh, to help students, young genocide survivors to go to school. Uh, shelter, shelter, you know, building houses for those, those one who don't have. And, you know, uh, health, you know, health means that uh, uh, medical insurance uh, support and also economic empowerment. During the commemoration period, their businesses were closed for half day and in some cases closed the entire day as a show of support and solidarity during this period. Investors and entrepreneurs have a mandate to participate in CSR events, which is now deeply entrenched into the workplace and into the employee day-to-day -day activities. When we started, it's not like now. There's a huge difference. You remember people have been talking about the services in Rwanda, uh, being a bit slow but according to me as an Akumat from 2008 to date uh, uh, things have really changed I can confirm that we actually also like to encouraging the orphans who are affected who are the victims of the genocide and whenever we work with them because we have so many of them we keep on encouraging them that of course the government is there to assist in a, in a well-wisher, corporates and everybody are there to assist. But at the same time, they have to team up with them to be able to overcome uh, the past and to build it today. Part of the, the, the business is 
is to respond to the social uh, responsibility they have. And one of the, the social responsibility they have should be support genocide survivors, support commemoration activities. Because this is a part of, as, as I said, this is a part of history of the country. And if you're investing in a, in a country with a history, you need to be part of that history as well and, and, and uh, support in the reconstruction process. But again, on the business side as well, it, it, they are not helping for free in long term because the same people they are investing in will be the same people being their client in the future. I give you a typical example. If a telecom company is, is giving 10 million to, 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 to orphans, they are building this pool of people who will grow and tomorrow become their client. Therefore, for them, it's social investment in the future. Rwanda's economic growth was rapid in the years following the genocide against the Tutsi, largely due to determined economic policy, the catch-up effect due to starting from a very low baseline in 1994 and relatively high aid flows. The growth has been more modest in recent years, stabilizing alongside infrastructure development and better policies within the different sectors. In terms of the agriculture sector, it has been a subsistence, uh, you know, Base sector uh, for many years uh, before the 1994 genocide against Tutsis, and so uh, after that period, uh, you know, it was important to almost start from scratch. Uh, there are certain choices that had to be made. Um, before, uh, we're not talking of seven priority crops that we are focusing on here to achieve the growth that we are currently achieving, but also uh, the levels of uh, of uh, reduced poverty that we are seeing today. So we had to make uh, some deliberate choices uh, to modernize this sector, uh, to make it f uh, commercially viable and attractive to the private sector. There are certain choices that had, that had to be made. Uh, while before, uh, you know, it was just about basically living, you know, on a daily basis not worrying really much about sustainability, about the future. Yeah, it's, it's just a straight, straight point of growing from no civilization to civilization, <laughs> like Africa has been. Uh, at an earlier age, there was no infrastructure, there was no product, there was nothing. You depend on having nothing. To, to now, when things are growing, there is infrastructure, there is there are good government policies, although, although we are still demanding a lot from government to push in, but at least there is a, a way forward. In, before 1994, there was nothing. Uh, probably in the whole country, you would count there was only one chicken farm which was owned by government and which was not doing well at all. So it's a matter of just getting civilized and you do the right things. I would say that looking at where our GDP per capita is and uh, the penetration, we've, we've done quite well and, and we are still growing. But uh, there will be a correlation again between the uh, growth of the uh, national income, or especially per capita, with the penetration of and utilization of these new technologies. According to analysts, there is, however, still a lot that needs to be done in continuation to the progress that has been achieved over the past 21 years. I believe that we are on the right track of development, but we're still missing, some, you know, we're still missing skills. There are, you know, still missing some opportunities of, you know, being integrated in the economic. Uh, being um, in a sustainable way. I don't think uh, enough is, uh, we are doing enough. We should do more. Okay. One, uh, because of the history, these people need more support than what they are receiving now. So it's, it's uh, our social responsibility to help victims of, of the genocide. But on the other hand, uh, companies should invest more to support this population to be able to consume their product as well. So more we, 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 we do social pro programs, more we create demand for our products. 
as I think as a business person. This country has changed. It will never be the same. It has changed for good and forever. 